Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is Battlefield 3. Well, the game's not out yet, so this is the beta that's opened up for those who purchased Medal of Honor. If I recall correctly, I think it was actually a pre-order for Medal of Honor. Yes, I was the sap that pre-ordered Medal of Honor. It's quite appropriate, considering that, as you will most likely find out through this video, if I don't get shot to pieces, oh my god, as I was saying, that this game actually feels quite a lot like Medal of Honor. So, I played a match to start with, mainly to get the settings all sorted out, because I was having some issues, in that you can't change the settings until you are actually in a game. Annoyingly enough, the first time I tried to do that, I ended up being kicked by an administrator for being idle for too long because I was changing my settings around. I don't know why it is that you cannot change options outside of the game, but you can't change options outside of the game. In fact, you can't even really load the game at all. You have to load from something called the Battle Log, which is an online server system. Now, that online system is in a browser, so... When I say server browser, I'm quite literally meaning an actual browser-based system. And if I'm totally honest, I really do not like it an awful lot at all. No. Down you go. Thank you very much. This was actually the bit, in fact, where I realized that this game does feel a lot, lot like Medal of Honor. The gunplay on the basic guns is a very, very similar the rest of it feels pretty much like Bad Company 2. There are some changes here and there, which I'll try and highlight as I go through this. It's this pre-recorded gameplay, mostly because, well, it's really, really difficult to commentate this stuff as you're playing. And also, I was trying to get the best possible frame rate out of things. The frame rate does dip from time to time, and that's mostly due to it being in the beta. As far as I can tell, with everything cranked up to max on my setup, which you're probably well aware of by now at 1080p, I get around 60, 70 FPS, which is not bad considering that it is unoptimized and, of course, drivers will improve things, so performance shouldn't really be too much of a problem. But let's talk about gunplay for the time being, shall we? So, if you've played Medal of Honor and if you've ever used the M4 or the AK in that game, then you will probably be extremely familiar with how these guns feel. They... The, these guns in particular, I don't know what the rest of them are like because I haven't unlocked them yet. I did try the sniper rifle and, well, it also felt a bit Medal of Honor-ish, less Bad Company 2-ish, which that, it, I might add, is kind of a bad thing. Bad Company 2's weapons felt like they had quite a lot of weight to them, particularly the sniper rifles, whereas Medal of Honor, not so much. Now, with the main battle rifles that you've got there i say battle rifle and that's not really the correct nomenclature I should be talking about assault rifles they feel almost exactly the same now i don't know if you're going to like that or not personally i did play quite a lot of medal of honor multiplayer and it was all right it wasn't too bad it just wasn't anything particularly special and the stacking kill streaks were extremely stupid but otherwise i was fairly okay with it some of you might not have been, in which case you may not enjoy the main assault rifle style weapons. I did also try a little bit of the support weapons as well. One of the very light machine guns, the sort of infantry automatic weapons, which the one that you start with has about a 50 round clip and it does have a basic bipod you can use. So it's not too shabby. Thanks for the team kill, bro. Don't really know why they turned friendly fire on in the beta. That sounded like a terrible idea. And as it turns out, it really, really is. Plenty of people end up killing each other. It's not so great. I have to say as well, using the iron sights, the basic iron sights on these weapons, it's extremely difficult because you're often engaging at a fairly extreme range. And it is quite hard to hit people. It really is as simple as that. It's not too bad, though. It's always nice for a little bit of authenticity, but I'll be extremely glad when I've unlocked the reflex or something like that because the iron sights on the AK, not so great. Ouch, ouch, ouch. Something else I don't really like is the fact that snipers are really, really good in this game. Incredibly good. It's not very difficult at all to hide in the foliage because, as you probably noticed, there's quite a lot of it. He's got a gammy eye. What's going on with him? The foliage in this game is very, very thick. It's very, very difficult to see through. It's extremely detailed. 
Now, of course, from a graphical perspective, that's a really, really awesome thing. Very, very awesome indeed. Speaking of awesome, look at that. That's, that's pretty amazing. There's a lot of that sort of going off in the background in this game, which does give the uh, battlefield in general an extremely authentic feel because the, there is fighting going on that you are not necessarily involved in. You've seen a little bit of that in Bad Company 2. There's more of that in Battlefield 3, this sort of off-map shelling and things like that that add to the feeling. And you do feel way, way less restricted. And honestly, I'm looking at this map in particular, the outdoor area, very open, very free. You can do an awful lot with it. You can go pretty much anywhere, which is awesome. Unfortunately, this map, which goes by the name Metro, you've probably seen some of this in the trailer, is otherwise quite restrictive. Once you're through this, and this is the Rush mode, which is very, very similar to Rush in Bad Company 2, once you're through to the objectives in the underground area, there isn't really a huge amount of freedom of movement. Very much corridor fighting, urban warfare in that regard. But what I will say to the counterpoint, is that it's a very big change of pace. And you can see right there, we've actually ended up losing that point, so we're gonna be spawning in the underground area. It's a big change of pace and it actually changes the style of warfare involved in it. And that's actually kind of cool. That's something I do want to point out. Some people were saying that this was a really bad map and the alpha testers apparently hated it and were very surprised when it was put into the beta, but you do go from this big outdoor area where snipers are very very viable into an area where you're probably going to be liking shotguns and maybe some smgs and of course support weapons just a little bit more and going through corridor based cover fighting now that i'm all right with that i think is pretty awesome there's also going to be something said for the sound inside this area the reverb effects are extremely good I mean, you expect that from a battlefield game particularly with bad company 2 the sound quality there was extremely good it is here too it sounds awesome inside a tunnel-based area like this. And the graphics do shine very, very nicely with the trace of fire, the reflections off the walls and the lighting effects. And nobody's going to argue that this is a bad-looking game. If you argue this is a bad-looking game, you're absolutely stupid. Uh, you really, really, really are. It has some texture issues here and there, but of course some of that will be beta and some of it is simply the fact that, well, textures are just not as high resolution as we would like them to be. I certainly wouldn't turn around and blame consoles. That's a very easy thing to do and incredibly stupid because, I mean, if you look at the texture work on, say, those bricks on the wall, they're extremely awesome. Very, very good indeed. There's some issues I've got with the metal work, like, say, I had with Crisis 2 as well, but in general, texture work seems to be extremely good. I would have perhaps liked to see a little bit more detail on the weapons. Not really sure what's going on with that, but, well... Unfortunately, you cannot take cover behind a large medipack, as much as I would like to. Now, most of the guys in the game at the minute, I think, are playing Assault. And Assault now is the medic in this game. So you do have a medic pack. You can get a defibrillator, but you are your frontline Assault guy. So instead of being the support weapon dude, which sort of makes sense, I suppose, because you want your medic, medic at the front dropping medic packs and reviving people as opposed to at the back or camping with a support weapon. So that's okay. The support class... I believe now is the guy who doles out ammo, if I recall correctly. And then you've also got, of course, the engineer and the recon. Recon could deploy a mobile spawn point. I say mobile, that's not actually true. It's a static spawn point. It's mobile in the sense that you can carry it somewhere and you can replace it if you so desire. That's okay, you can do that. But you can't sort of move it around on the ground or anything like that. But it is very, very useful and it seems to stick around for pretty much ever, as far as I can see. I dumped one down in a previous match and it was sitting there for about five minutes and nobody shot it. I don't think they could be bothered. Have a look at our loadouts right there. You see I've unlocked the basic assault rifle and also a shotgun. Now, weapon modification system is once again quite similar to Medal of Honor in terms of various add-ons that you can swap around here. So you have got an underslung rail there. I do have a sight optics that I can put on it. I wouldn't want to put that one on in this area because that's a four-time zoom, which to me doesn't seem like a good idea. And you've also got spec, and spec is pretty much a perk. So in this case, it's lightweight, very, very similar to Bad Company 2, lets you sprint faster. What I do like is the fact that you don't seem to get tired. You sprint and you don't seem to stop. Maybe there is a limitation to the amount of sprinting you can do, but it seems like you can just run, run, run forever. And that's good because, quite frankly, sprinting for five seconds and then getting tired is not exactly what they teach you in the Marine Corps, is it not? 
Unless, of course, everyone in the Marine Corps is suddenly 400 pounds. Right, let's get out, 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 out. Because this area is starting to become very, very unpleasant indeed. It's getting a little bit hot. We are very, very close to that capture point there. So we're sort of trying to back off just a little bit, put on a fighting retreat. I think the problem that I've got at the moment with the beta is that it doesn't really feel like Battlefield. It feels like Medal of Honor. And Medal of Honor, as you're probably aware, had very, very, very few vehicles. Very few. This map has no vehicles at all. In the Alpha, apparently, there was an APC available. Here, there is not, which is kind of lousy. So all of the outdoor fighting feels pretty Medal of Honor-ish. And I don't know if I like that too much. Battlefield really is down to combined arms and large open fields and things like that. And this does not feel like Battlefield to me. It very much feels like Medal of Honor. Which is not what I was hoping for, honestly. It really, really is not. And I'm hoping that with the addition of more maps and, of course, revealing vehicles and things like that, there's a test server online right now with Caspian. And I think Caspian would be much, much better for demonstrating what Battlefield is actually all about. Whereas this is... How many more times can I say? It's like Medal of Honor. It really, really is. It's Bad Company 2-esque in a certain respect as well, but especially here, it seems like the destruction engine is nowhere near as awesome. And for instance, blowing holes in the side of buildings just never seems to happen. Maybe it's just because nobody's wielding rocket launchers or anything like that, but you don't see buildings coming down. You see small pieces of cover destroyed here and there. And I believe they said something on the lines of that's what they wanted. They didn't want the level of destruction that they had in Bad Company 2. And, uh, that's kind of unfortunate, but we'll, again, we will see going forward because this is very much a first impressions. And as you can see, things do change people don't really know what they're doing right now and this particular map doesn't really support the destruction engine all that well it's odd i mean for instance why is it that we can't blow a great gaping hole in that metro train right there why is that well, apparently we just can't do it our weapons aren't powerful enough well i certainly weren't bad company too i could blow a hole through a big stone wall that's here it doesn't seem like we can even blow up a bin i don't really know what's going on there a little unfortunate to say the least I think we will stick with the assault rifle for the moment, but I have gained an additional add-on under the secondary there. You see, I'm going to get a heavy barrel, so that's fine if you're aiming down sights. It actually does help your accuracy quite a bit. It screws your accuracy up just a little bit if you are firing from the hip, and I'm not going to put that sight on there. That doesn't seem like a good idea. Let's see, it is far, far too close quarters for that to work. I will probably show you more Battlefield going forward. I think that's very, very likely since I'm only really demonstrating the Assault class here. I'm not really showing you how the support works and things like that. Uh, I I would love to know what actually happened there. <laughs> I really, really would. This game at the moment, the beta suffers from having a locked FOV of 70, which is actually too low. If I recall correctly, you could actually get Black Ops higher than that. So that's not so great at all. I used to play... What did I do? Yes, I think I played... Bad Company 2 at 100, and I have a very large monitor, so that kind of makes sense for me. I think that might be a bit too much for most, but I think 90 is the best FOV for most people on 16x9 monitors. 85 to 90. 70 is a little too, too tight. It does make me somewhat nauseous, and it also results in having people just run past you and you being unable to see them as they shoot you from the side. And, of course, that's not authentic at all, is it? Now, FOV limitations are generally in place because they help consoles deal with the increased load. For instance, a console is six to seven years old tech. It's not so great. And as a result, limiting the FOV means that the game has to render less at any given time. So that's pretty cool. On a PC, that's not really an issue. So you should be able to push it behind that. I have to say that is just a beta issue. So don't go screaming on the forums just yet. There is an FOV option in the options menu. It is just currently locked down at the moment. It is grayed out. You cannot change it. And thanks, engineer guy, for ending my wonderful run of kill streaks and so forth there. I was enjoying myself just sitting at the top of that escalator, gunning down hapless foes that came past. 
I've got to say, I do like the sense of momentum that we've got here in that the way that Rush works, the fact that it's pushing you back constantly. I mean, this was in Bad Company 2 as well, but I think they've refined it quite nicely for Battlefield 3, and Rush seems to work pretty well here. And as much as some people might detest this particular map, I think it's a good demonstration of the wide variety of combat areas that you'll probably end up encountering. Unfortunately, the outdoor area doesn't actually have any vehicles on it at the moment, whereas if you saw the trailer of Metro, then you'll have noticed vehicles and things there. So I think that it's not really an accurate representation of how this map is going to end up playing out or indeed how any of the other maps are playing out you know there's no aircraft there's no vehicles of any sort so that completely changes the way that the combat works and of course it does make it feel medal of honor -y as opposed to battlefield -y. and we want to we want battlefield -y, surely does anyone really want a more medal of honor themed game i don't <laughs> i want a battlefield game and you're not really going to see that from this stage of the beta. You will see it, I would think, going forward when they show some of the other maps. Most definitely, but not here. So I'll come to a quick conclusion on this, and I will be showing you more Battlefield 3 as we go through the beta, hopefully showing you some different classes, some other maps and things like that, and some different kinds of gameplays. But my initial first impressions, which is what these videos actually are, all things considered, is, well... It's okay, but it's meh. It's a bit meh. I'm not blown away by it. And graphically, yes, it's certainly, without question, an advancement on what we've seen before. It is a very, very good-looking game. It's not as good as it should be because it hasn't got ultra graphics enabled yet. You can actually select those in the menu, but they do not work. So that's something that needs to be sorted out. But once again, beta is beta, so that's to kind of be expected. It still looks really, really good. It sounds really, really good, which is what we expect from pretty much every Battlefield game. It's got to sound amazing. But uh, it's it's very much an iterative evolution as opposed to a big revolution in FPS. I'm not, I'm not seeing the evolution in FPS at all here. It, it's very much building on what came before. Is there anything wrong with that? Probably not, but you're talking about Battlefield 3, which supposedly is a direct sequel to Battlefield 2, and it's not really feeling like it is a direct sequel to Battlefield 2. It it feels like Bad Company 3, but with a lot of the destruction taken out and sort of crossed with Medal of Honor. But that's an initial impression of the beta. That's not necessarily how the game is actually going to be. So take it for what it is, folks. It is a first impressions of an incomplete product. And I will give you further impressions and more detailed thoughts as we end up going through the beta. I would like to show you some more gameplay footage, but I believe in about 30 seconds time, the sound actually breaks and the game crashes soon afterwards. So there's not really a lot I can do there. But whatever the case, it is a very, very solid shooter. It's just perhaps I hoped for something a little bit special from Dyson really at this point it is more of the same my name is Top Biscuit having a little look at Battlefield 3 hopefully you enjoyed the 1080p footage it didn't really seem fair to put it out in anything less than that and I'll see you next time